Welcome back to Prairie Exotics, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Steve, this is Char. Okay. And uh, today we got a couple extra cool little critters to uh, go over and learn about, and then another special creature feature where we'll learn about taking care of one of our awesome pets over at the shop. All right. Um, what do you want to start with? Slimy, furry, um, slippery, slimy, scaly. slithery. Slithery? Yeah. Let's go with a little bit different. Okay. Oh, this is heavy. There's so many options. Okay. I was hoping they'd be hiding completely and I'd just have a box of sand to show you, but uh, <laughs> uh, there's actually two snakes in here. Oh. I'll give you this one. Okay. You can do it. <laughs> I just don't yes. like the head part. There you it's go. It's so little. Now let's find the other one. Mm. Digging for treasure. Oh, I think I got it. There if we it bites go. me, Steve, I'm <laughs> No, so you're fine. So check out these guys. So these ones are called sand boas. So I love using these in our presentations with the kids, like at parties and daycares, because um, I'll be like, hey kids, do you want to see a boa constrictor? And they're like, yeah, because they think boa constrictors are the big, big yeah. snakes, and they are. There's lots of big boa constrictors, but these are technically a boa, and they're a constricting snake as well. But this is pretty much full size. Uh, they might get a little bit bigger, but that's about normal. Okay, so they squeeze. Yep, yep, they squeeze their food, and they spend most of their time living under the sand. So from a pet standpoint, um, they're not that great. They're not usually too keen on being handled a lot. They're actually doing oh. pretty well sitting here nice and still for us. Okay. Um, but from a visual standpoint, you're going to set up a big tank with sand and you're not ever going to see them because they're just hiding under the sand the whole time. Yeah, these ones would make good uh, bracelets. Yeah, they're pretty <laughs> nice that way. If you look at their face too, see how their eyeballs are kind of like on top of their head a little bit more? Oh, yeah. And their nose is kind of like a shovel. So that's how they use their nose to the shovel and dig down into the dirt using all their scales and scoots to crawl down. And they can sit with just their eyes sticking out on the sand, kind of like our Pac-Man frog, right? The horned mm -hmm. toad sitting there boop, <laughs> and wait for their prey to come by. So while they're pretty neat looking creatures and they come in all sorts of colors and patterns these days, um, not one of the best as far as a pet, definitely not for a beginner. Okay. Yeah, these are more of a, a hobby level snake that people that are into collecting snakes are going to have, but not Collecting so snakes. Oh yeah, there's Look a lot of people that... He listened to my request. Let's see if we can seal. Dig back down in the sand, maybe. I like this. That's Hi. a nice little bracelet you got going on. I there. know. That is trying to eat you. I haven't. I can't tell. Don't no. Way. Like that. I do feel like squeezing. Okay. What There's does it There's no eat? way it would eat. What is it? Well, little it's not going to eat me. But it's gonna, little mice. Little mice. Yeah, all right. Just tiny, itty bitty little mice. <laughs> sure. Tell somebody who's scared of snakes. <laughs> it can't fit you in its mouth. You're fine. <laughs> not worried about that. All right. Let's do something cute right. for you after that one. <laughs> Let's do three cute ones. Okay. What do we have here? All kinds of cute. I'm just going to pull them out because if I okay. lift the top off, they're all going to come flying out. <gasps> My favorite! Lily. Oh, hello! And Opie. <sighs> and... Buddy. Oh my gosh. Do these guys, are they, do they typically bite though before I touch them? They can, just like anything else, but yeah. um, ferrets get a bad rap because like little children and most little animals, they bite like with puppies and stuff like yeah. that and you got to teach them not to bite. Yeah. Um, they've got a really strong jaw, like one of the strongest jaws and very sharp teeth. So when they're little and they bite, people are like, ah, they freak out and they don't want to handle them. them yeah. And then the ferret just learns that behavior and learns, hey, you like, should bite. Yeah. But my guys, because we have socialized them so much, no biting and they're super friendly. They're so, so don't jump up. This there. is my older boy, he's a grandpa. Opie's about seven or eight years old. Uh, his brother Jackson unfortunately passed away last year. Oh. And ferrets are very social, they have to be together and if they're not, they can get depressed. They'll sometimes stop eating and then he could himself just die of depression essentially. So, so they shouldn't be alone. No, if you, you have one, you should have it with you at all times and be playing with it, but it's best to have but them if you in have two it, or three. Okay, all right. Yeah, so we went to our friends over at the Manitoba Ferret Association and uh, okay. picked up these two that have been surrendered. They're uh, siblings, Lily and jump? Buddy. Yeah, I don't trust his jumping. Ferrets are terrible at jumping. I don't know if you've ever seen the videos on YouTube. They get all ready and they jump and like the front might catch it, but the back just <laughs> falls and doesn't make it. I don't want you to get hurt. But they're kind of like a weasel. They're in the mustelid family. Um, they are, um, they do have a scent gland, yeah, but here in Canada they all have to be descented as well as neutered, so. Okay, so if I'm going to pick one up, what would be the proper way to? Go for Lily. She's small this and one? easy. Okay. Yeah. Just and support then just, her. Yep, okay. support the front and the back. Okay. I'll try to make sure these guys oh, aren't jumping off. <laughs> Come up here. <laughs> See, I'm holding two already. You can't even okay. pick up one. All right, all right, all right. Okay. 
All right. There oh you my go. gosh, See? you're so cute. Hi. Kisses. Hi. Oh my god. Right? Fairs get a bad rap because of the smell, but if you can get past it, they make great pets. You're fine. I mean, for me, I go into work and I have like 200 animals I have to care for. Geckos, even the birds often don't care. Hi. Frogs don't care if I'm there to help take care of them. But these guys, as soon as I walk in, they're like, yeah. let's play. But the other they're funny so part loving. is, is they sleep for like 20 hours a day. Oh. Yeah, but for the four hours they're up, it's like, wow, let's give her, as we can see. Yeah, they're ready to go. You want to go back and play with your friends? Everything is a game and a toy with ferrets. Uh, ferret is actually a word that means little thief, and they are notorious <laughs> they do look for like stealing little thieves. stuff. Yeah, with the banded eyes, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, when they come home to play, I have to always check under my couch after because they've made a hole, and they go and steal stuff they find, and, and they're strong. <laughs> he tried to take a full snow brush, like the full thing, across the basement and into the couch. Yeah, like, he's like, oh, I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> this is Everything so is a game with them. Oh, they're so much fun. Yes. Okay, now I want a ferret. In the spring, the uh, Manitoba Ferret Association has a spring frolic. I think it's at St. Mattel Park. Mm -hmm. And every, all the ferret owners get together <gasps> and they have ferrets running all around and leashes and stuff. It's a great time. If anyone ever wants to check out, it's super fun. That would be amazing. An association. Oh, we're going to lose one. <laughs> Hi. And that's the thing. They'll play like this for about five, ten minutes. And then, and then they sleep. Then is this done. one friendly if I pick yes, it up? Yes, that's Opie. That's my big boy I've had for the okay. longest. I'm going yeah, to hold the front, hold the back. But like, they're very good. Oh, See, hi. does my ferret hang low? Does it wobble to and fro? <laughs> they're very flexible, and that helps them actually for hunting. Um, in the UK, they use them for ferreting, which is hunting rabbits. They'll actually send them down the rabbit hole, and they grab the rabbit here or here, and they just pull them up out of the tunnel. What? Ah, he just bit me. <laughs> I'm putting you down. He's going for your jewels. Yep. They like fancy stuff. Wants All to steal right. your bracelet. All right. <laughs> you can On have that it. note, you guys are going back in here. <laughs> little stinkies. He didn't bite me. He bit the, he bit the bracelet. Yeah. Close well, enough. it's shiny. He wants to steal. I told you, you're the thief. <laughs> I have him trained well. He's like, I'll take that. I'm trying to get them to go for wallets, especially ones that wallets. have ta <laughs> tap cards, right? Now a tap? It'll be great. No okay, more. Hey, hey, you fix that. All right, I will fix that. Right I'll here. make myself useful. So they're fuzzy. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about... Those are really cute. Thank you. Well, let's do this one first. Okay. Because this one's really cute. So this is the one I've been talking about is not a good pet. This is what people see in the pet store. And they're like, oh, it's the cute little Franklin turtle, right? <laughs> this one's already getting bigger. They start at like the size of a loony or toony. So easy. You set up a 10-gallon tank, put in your water, a little bit of land, a light bulb, eat their little fish sticks, and they're ready to go. Yeah. So easy. Problem is, in a couple years, they get bigger. I'll show you how big they get. Okay. This one isn't even full size. This is, I think, a male. So males typically stay a little bit smaller than the females do. So females can get even a little bit larger. So this guy can't be in just a small 10-gallon tank. You have to upgrade to like a three to 400-gallon mm -hmm. tank or a pond. So now you're spending five, $600 on okay. an enclosure, the filter. And even with a really good filter, you still have to do multiple water changes and clean that filter. And it, it's not fun. Yeah. And you can't really play with it because it's always swimming in the water and pooping in the water. So <laughs> they're not an interactive pet. Um, and they live like 25 to 30 years, like for quite some time. I didn't, how long did those ferrets live for? Ferrets are like seven to eight years. Okay. Yeah, they're not as long. Not as long as these guys. And so that's the problem. We get people that get them like this, it gets this, and they're like, oh, you know what? It's too much work. They're boring. Um, we're going to surrender it to you. Like, honestly, it once just, or twice a week, we get calls for these red-eared sliders. Cause just do your research, right? That's like, why I try and promote people and push the things with like the box turtles and even the tortoises. And just call you and get some information yep. too. Because we don't want to have these guys keep coming in. Or the worst is if someone goes and throws them outside because these guys aren't a, a good species to have out there, an invasive species, and they could cause problems with any of our turtles out there. Um, I thought about trying to collect as many and sending them back down to the states where they're found. But they're like, no, we got too many down here. They don't even oh. want them there. So there's not a lot of options. Um, I even had someone call me the other day. They're like, oh, we just picked up a little red eared slider from the store on the weekend. Uh, I know in a couple years it's going to be too big. Can you take it then when we're ready? And I'm like, oh, lovely. Can, can you please just go return that turtle now? Yeah. Like, maybe you get a rabbit or something that's not going to live quite as long. So yeah, but you can see compared to the tortoise, a lot of a thinner shell. Mm -hmm. So it helps float through the water. And then We've got our webbed feet and that big beak for uh, snapping on meat. See how sharp that is? Yeah, it's very sharp. Yeah, there pretty cute go. though. That's slimy. Got a little escape That's artist adorable. here going, right? Yeah, I can see. He's super cute. Hi, I'm not going to hold you, but you sure look cute. All right, well, let's put you back in here. <laughs> 
That's when the turtle was biting the dog and the <laughs> little sideshow uh, animal. <laughs> oh, that was so bad. Yeah. That, don't do that. Um, okay, let's go check out one of the creature features and then we'll be back in a little bit. Okay. All right, thanks. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the creature feature for today. Uh, we actually got a double header for today's segment uh, because they're pretty identical in their care with just a few small changes. Um, this little guy here is Yo-Yo and uh, Yo-Yo is called an African uh, fat tail gecko, comes from Africa and as we can see here, the big fat tail, we did talk about this one on our studio segment because they are pretty easy to take care of and uh, one of the more popular reptile pets for beginners. Um, as far as setup, when they're little, uh, we actually have a little guy here, let me put Yo-Yo back up in his cage just for a moment. Uh, this is from my friend over at uh, Jenny's Terrarium. She's a breeder. So this is just a little one. Uh, he's a juvenile, so I think he's about nine months old, give or take. I'd have to double check with her. Uh, she breeds some amazing geckos. And the nice thing with the uh, fat tails is out of the egg, they are typically very calm and handleable, uh, whereas the leopard geckos can be a little bit more jumpy. Um, so from a standpoint of a beginner, these guys might be a little bit easier for a younger child uh, than an older child could probably deal with the leopard gecko. Um, problem with these guys though too is they are needing a little bit more humidity so that adds a little bit of work so humidity being the water that we use to moisten and set them up so um, let me put the little guy back in his little cage here don't want to stress him out too much um, but when you're setting these guys up for most people they're going to use either something like a 10 gallon or a 50 gallon tank. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure you obviously have a secure lid on there, not only to make sure it doesn't get out, but more so any other pets or children uh, aren't getting in there causing problems as well. Uh, for the leopard gecko, because they need humidity, we either use, we're using this tank, a little bit coarser, what's called cocoa fiber. It's a cocoa husk that's been chopped up. Or you can buy it a little bit thinner like this, so you pour that all on the bottom. And that way you can mist it. It's not gonna mold like uh, aspen wood chips do that you use with hamsters and all that kind of stuff. So this will hu hold the humidity a little bit better. Um, basic setup, you wanna have about a third of the enclosure set up for heat, because they don't need any lights being nocturnal, but they do need heat being from Africa. So we use this to give them belly heat. Um, a light on top being nocturnal again isn't needed to provide a basking spot. They're just gonna get it from the belly. So biggest thing when you're using a heat pad though, because this thing can max out at like 200 degrees or something silly like that, you need a heat controller. Part of it plugs into your wall, you got a little probe, you're going to run this probe into the tank and you want to put it where that heat pad is on the warm side, about half an inch to an inch just off of it, so where that little gecko is going to be sitting. And you can adjust it here to the temperature and see what temperature we wanted. And these guys are going to be around uh, 85, 88 degrees temperature, so it won't like that. Um, and you're also going to need to have a temp tracker, like a little reader to make sure your temperatures are all fine. And that's one of the crucial things. Um, when you go out and get a reptile, you're not just buying a dog, picking up a dog bowl, dog food in a dog house and you're guaranteed to go. A lot of these need temperature, humidity controlled environments set up for them. So it takes days, sometimes even weeks of proper setup and planning to make sure your home is ready and that enclosure home is ready for the animal that you're bringing in there. So once you've got your heat, you've got your dirt substrate, you're going to want to have your water dish for them, a little hide that we usually put two hides, uh, one on the cool side, one on the warm side, so they have an option of being able to go through there because they're regulating their temperature. They're not really cold blooded, they're ectothermic. So they control their temperature by going into the warmer areas to warm up or into the cool areas to cool down. They can't sweat or shiver like we do to control our temperature. So that's why we have to do it for them by using some of these devices. So and then you can add just some pretty stuff like we deck this one out a little bit more with some accessories, a little plant then there make it look a little nicer. But um, we'll step over and take a quick look at the leopard gecko and see how they're set up just a little bit differently. All right, so that was the fat tails we were learning about. And the leopard gecko is their cousin, so they're from Africa as well, but they tend to be in the drier parts now. We're gonna try and find out. These guys are terrestrial, so they don't usually climb. They're usually along the ground. Uh, not in that hide, not in that hide, not in his, oh, oh, there he is. Yeah, he's actually did climb up a little bit. Um, so while they are terrestrial and don't climb trees, where they come from, there would be some rocks and stuff like that that they would be uh, climbing around on. Now, I tend to joke that this is actually one of the more uh, mean animals that we have at our zoo. Now typically leopard geckos are great beginners for most people. I did say like out of the egg they are a little bit more active than the African fat tail but um, this guy came from a pet store that was shutting down. He had been returned like two or three times and he just has a bad attitude. He might get away with being nice for a little bit. We do use him in displays once in a while. 
uh, but then you'll go to put them away. And uh, when he bites, with most leopard geckos, if they do bite, it's just simply on and off. You might not even see any blood marks at all, but what he likes to do is he really chomps down and he rolls, like does the death roll that an alligator does. So he tends to remove chunks and it really is not a fun experience. So I tend to give him his space, but you can see, let's see what kind of mood is he in. I don't want to get bit on TV, but at the same point, he is a gorgeous looking gecko. Let's see, I'm risking this for you guys. Look at that tail though on him. He's a big boy. And he actually also lost two little toes there to uh, a cage mate. Um, he had been with a girl and she was not happy with his advances and actually took his fingers off. And that is one thing to mention, because these guys do like a little bit drier in here, we're not misting them for humidity like we do with the African uh, fat tail. Um, they can tend to get issues with shedding. Um, they actually eat their shed. They rip it right off their body. Um, they do it partially to hide where they've been staying because they often shed where they are hiding and living. Um, and it's good protein for these little guys, apparently. Um, but if it's too dry, sometimes you'll see it gets stuck on the toe. So we have to be careful to help them get the shed pieces off the toe or a tip of the tail. Um, and if it's really bad, we'll give them a little container with some paper towel or sphagnum moss, keep it wet, and he'll crawl in there, roll around, and that's usually enough to get him done. So uh, between the leopard gecko and the fat tail, both are excellent. Um, in the market right now, depending on the color and pattern, depends on the price usually. Um, but you can find leopard geckos anywhere from 50 to $150, dollars, whereas the fat tails might be in the 100 to 200 dollar range. But there's a lot of neat stuff available. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll take a look around, see some more of the animals we have here, and uh, see you guys in the next episode. Hey there guys, welcome back from the Creature Feature. Hope you really enjoyed learning about that animal there. Um, me and Char are gonna try feeding the bullfrog again. This is uh, Mr. Prince Charming, and he eats a full-size mouse, sometimes two. We'll see if he wants to go for it. Oh, almost, we got the tongue action, but he's like, no. There he goes. Oh there we got it. So usually about two big bites in, maybe three, and then you can suck up that tail like spaghetti. That's wild. It's a frog, but it's a mouse. <laughs> so that's a jumbo mouse. That's the largest mouse that we can buy from the pet store. Uh, but he can actually eat about a medium rat, which is give or take the size of my fist and the size of a rat. So, um, but I usually do two mice every two weeks or so, and then uh, the rat once a month, give or take. But yeah, look, looks like he's pretty much done it there. <laughs> Should we? I think we'll just leave him alone now. Let him digest that. <laughs> Wow. Impressive, eh? That Yo, is I'm impressive. I'm going to put the lid on, though, because he can actually jump out of there pretty high. Oh, lovely. So we'll uh, close that there so he can finish his little... Oh, uh, buddy, you got a little, little shput something on the <laughs> Get him a mouth, napkin. A <laughs> mouth still hanging out. All right, let's see. Uh, speaking of amphibians, I got my little buddy Stevie here. Okay. And he's definitely wet and slimy, yeah, so we're going to have to hold him too much, but he's a cutie. And he's a tiger salamander. He's actually found here in Manitoba. Okay. And they're an amphibian. And they start off just like most amphibians, eggs, little tadpoles. They grow in through a larval stage where he's got more of a thick tail, mm -hmm. like, like a paddle for being underwater. He actually has gills and can breathe underwater and they live underwater for a while. Uh, then they go through a metamorphosis and they actually lose their gills. Their tail changes into more of this roundish tail and they emerge from the water and start living on the land. Um, they've got these really cool cousins, they're called oxalotls, they're found in Mexico. Okay. Um, they're pretty much extinct in the wild due to pollution in the lake that they were found, unfortunately. Oh, sad. Uh, but in captivity they're doing great. Um, one of the main reasons is scientists are using them to, for research because they can grow back parts of their limbs. Well, that can come in handy. Yeah, like arms gone, here comes arm, part of their brain, everything. Because what they want to do is, you know... I've heard about that, actually. Yeah, yeah. like if an army veteran blows off their arm, they want to be able to come back and grow a new arm, so that's what they're doing. And from a pet standpoint, they're pretty neat. They look like those little water dragons. So they have gills, and they never leave the water. So they stay in that water larval stage, which is kind of cool. Big paddle tail, they just smile and hang around. So they're not one you can play with, because they're more like having a fish, but they're yeah. pretty interactive. You can feed them worms, and they like to come out, and they'll follow your finger along. So they're pretty neat little ones that people like. Look at them go. Yeah, this is a guy <laughs> that so again, like you a big wouldn't... smile on his face. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah, he's always looking here to see if you get a little smile that way. <laughs> right? So this is one that you typically wouldn't have as a pet here in Manitoba. You can have salamanders, uh, but you're not technically supposed to have local species as pets. Oh. They don't want you to go outside and take animals. More so the concern is making money off of them. So if I was to try and sell him or making money by using education out of him, that's not something you want. If a kid goes and grabs a garter snake or has a, a frog, 
conservation is probably not going to worry about it too much, though it is still technically illegal. But they just don't want people going and trying to sell stuff on Kijiji, like that poaching down the states happening with so mm -hmm. many animals. Um, but this was one that was found in someone's basement, I think. It was up near Thompson. Okay. And uh, it was already winter, so they couldn't just go releasing it outside. So they got to the Thompson pet store, who we take a number of animals from. So they called us and said, hey, do you want the salamander? I said, sure, we'll take care of him. So we'll uh, see what happens come spring. We'll either maybe release him a nice place for him to go and enjoy or uh, see if our friends over at uh, Prairie Wildlife or the Wildlife Haven might want to add him to their education crew. We'll see. But, Does uh, he have a name? Stevie. Oh. Stevie. Yeah. Stevie Jr. He's pretty cute. All right, <laughs> let's get him in his slimy box. I got a really cool snake to show you here too. This one is another king snake. Okay. But this one, wait, I think it is. Who did I put in here? <laughs> yep. This is a California king snake. Oh, that's sh you're sharp looking. And look at that pattern. Yeah, that's it's amazing. It's almost a perfect stripe. So one of the cool things that people have started doing too is like with dogs, there's designer dogs and cats and stuff. Is mm -hmm. they've gotten into designer reptiles, snakes, bearded dragons. Yeah. So the fancier the color and the pattern and the more rare it is, the more money it's worth. So mm -hmm. like that ball python that we first showed you, the big ball python. Yeah. Um, that's a normal one you'd find out in the wild. Honestly, it's worth like $50. If there's one that there's only three that look like it in the world yeah. and it's super pretty looking, that thing can go for ten dollars to $15,000 or more. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't expect that. Every time. Every time. Didn't yeah. expect that. So he's a full stripe. <laughs> um, and there's one called a reverse stripe that would essentially be the snake would be white and this okay. white line would be black. It's kind of the opposite. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. neat looking. But yeah, being a California king snake, he lives in California and would like to eat other Snakes. snakes yeah, and lizards. But we feed them just a straight diet of mice. Mice and rats, the odd little chick too, just to give them a bit of a variety in their diet. You can see those scoots look pretty cool as he moves around. Do you want to try holding them? He almost matches your outfit. No. Oh, he's... He's a little more active. He's not as still as the other ones. Hi, buddy. Always smelling, trying to find food. What was the last thing you handled? Was it anything fuzzy? Oh my gosh, Steve, seriously. No, it was, it was salamanders and turtles. I think All you're right. fine. <laughs> you can't joke about something like that. He doesn't look that hungry. Yeah, he doesn't look that hungry. I think I fed him on the weekend anyway, so <laughs> it should be good. But this is a constrictor. Yeah. Oh, it's so cute. I love these designs. Look at that. Yeah. So being Fancy. a constrictor, he gives it a kiss, hug, wraps around, and everything okay. like that. Um, a lot of people are always worry, is the snake venomous? Because they don't want to get bitten, obviously, by something that's venomous. Um, but only 22% of the world's population of snakes are actually venomous. Okay. So like 78% of the rest of them are all mainly constrictors, or there is one uh, poisonous snake. So the main difference, uh, I think we explained between poison and venom is basically if it bites you or you bite it. Um, but there's a snake that eats a whole bunch of toads, mm -hmm. and the frogs actually make it toxic. And so much to the point that when it has its babies, it actually passes those toxins onto its babies. So it is technically poisonous and venomous. So if something eats it, like it passes it on to the babies and yeah. then they can be poisonous. So if something was to try and eat them, they would be safe. That is pretty fascinating. Gosh. Yeah. Like pretty nature. Cool, huh? Nature is amazing. So I want to show okay. you something else here before we finish off. I'm going to put him okay. back in his pillowcase. I brought some cool little eggs to show you. Okay. Because reptile eggs are a little different. They're not like a chicken egg, right? You take a chicken egg, you crack it, out comes the guts. What we do with our eggs, well, there's a whole bunch in here. Various different sizes. Try and pick out a couple here. They actually come out as a soft shell egg. So it's kind of squishy. And depending on how long they need to incubate, some are 30 days, some are 60 to 90 days. Mm -hmm. You usually set them in a box with some humidity from water, towels, paper, whatever you need to set it up with. Yeah. And then you wait. And then usually within the same day, boom, 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 they all start to hatch out. Oh my gosh, and little some baby snakes little would be the cutest. They are. Even little bearded baby dragons oh. and the little crested geckos and stuff are super adorable when they come out. So that shell starts off like about the size of your pinky in some cases and okay. will balloon to the size of your thumb okay. before it comes out. So I think these ones look like, those are probably bearded dragon egg eggs. These look like little gargoyle and crested gecko eggs. This one looks like, I don't know, that might even be a day gecko, like our little green guy up in yeah. here. These guys, what they actually do is they glue, and that's probably why it broke here, is they glue their egg to spot in the enclosure. So it stays safe. So yeah, so what I have to do is I'll usually take a deli like this, put it over the egg and seal it so that mom and dad don't crack it, or if it does hatch out, that baby doesn't get eaten by mom and dad. because They would eat it? 
that can happen. Yeah, it can. <sighs> so that's all we're going to talk about for right. today. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoy the show. Make sure to catch our next one where we'll learn about some more animals. Let's do it. All right. Thanks, all right. Thanks guys. Thank you.